thanks for uh, bringing me here. And wow, we are standing in a place. I mean, people like us, we pass through wine history, but this place, this is wine history. Can you tell us about uh, about Hetzolo and where we are? Yes, so in fact, Hetzolo means is really history. So it's more than 500 years of history. And it is one of the oldest estates in Tokaj and maybe uh, in Hungary. It was already founded in 1502. Uh, when the family Goray bought seven parcels of wine uh, at, uh, at the slope of Hét Sölő, and the name in fact explains this, because Hét in Hungarian means seven, Sölő means parcel of wine. We should talk about this place. This is not just one of the most spectacular cellar spaces in Tokai or Hungary. I mean, this is one of the most spectacular cellar spaces in the world. Yes, it's, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of history also very connected to Hungarian history. Even a king was crowned uh, in, uh, at this place, in this big hall. It's also called the Knight's Hall uh, because of this. But it was the production cellar for Hetzulu. They received the grapes here, so even chariots could pass in ancient times. Oh, here, ben -Hur. Just to bring the grapes have arrived. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it was in fact uh, double floored. So under this there was even another floor. We should talk about some of the modern history since uh, socialism. You, because we're here for our dry ferment wines, and now you're crafting some of those as well. As you mentioned, in the socialist era, there was no uh, viticulture at the steep slopes of Seetzölö because it was not possible to mechanize uh, these vineyards. They said it's not rentable. For 400 years, it was rentable and made maybe <laughs> the best also wines in Tokai, but then uh, they said it's not possible. And till, till the early 90s, with the political change, there was no viticulture, no winemaking at Hetzölö. And then Hetzölö was refunded in 91. So our vineyard is quite young. And uh, also, that's why it's important uh, for us to make dry wines from the beginning on. You know, Hetzölö, it kind of sounds a little bit like Han Solo from Star Wars. You want to pour some of your dry wines for me now, don't you? Maybe I should. Maybe I should. All right, let's go. So you've got some ferment for us to try, but it's not from 1502. No, not exactly. Um, it's from 2013, both of the wines. So the first one is a lighter style. Uh, it's a 2013 uh, full mint, a state full mint, uh, which was fermented in a stainless steel on a low temperature to just get a light, crispy, uh, lovely wine. Well, they say that ferment can be reminiscent of Riesling. And this wine is probably the closest to Riesling of all the ferments that I've tasted in, uh, in Tokai so far. It has a flinty minerality, similar to what you might find in Rheingau Riesling, but lemons and limes and a little hint of tropical fruit that's kind of similar to what you might get in Alsatian Riesling. And underneath it all is a steely type of mineral and uh, acidic verve. Uh, just a, a, a lovely, lovely wine. How about the second one? The second one is also a lovely, uh, but a more uh, serious uh, wine. It was fermented uh, in uh, oak barrels, exclusively French oak, and also aged in oak barrels, also from 2013. Great. Let's give it a whirl. This wine has the same steely, lovely minerality, acidic verve right underneath it, holding everything up. But on top, it's much creamier. There's, there's a bit more depth. Certainly the tropical fruits and the citrus fruits have more uh, just depth to them, and a bit more concentration. So there's a, almost a, while the first wine is not one to be trifled with, the second one even has a bit more seriousness to it. Very elegant. Well, this is a, a really nice uh, showing. Doing the history proud, and you want to give me all of your ferment. Maybe some bottles. This isn't working. Okay. 